Dr. Hartshorn, my name is and I'm trying to put together a thesis proposal for my master's. Okay. And I want to write it on the Cobain case. Okay. Because it's such a high profile case. And I'm just trying to see if I'm wording it right and I can also say, you know, I even called and we discussed and Okay. I'm just trying to put together something that'll really blow my professor's mind because I'm hoping this will open the door into a PhD program for me. Hi, I'm Tom Grant. Years ago, when I first wrote in the Cobain case study manual that Kurt's head was not blown off, as Courtney was telling everyone, you may have wondered how I knew that. Now you can listen to one source of our investigation that we have never revealed before this segment of Project Unplugged. These are short excerpts from an undercover call we made to Dr. Hartshorn shortly after Cobain's death. Uh, okay, the classic findings of a contact gunshot wound to the head. Mm -hmm. This was intraoral at the back of the hard palate. The soot that one sees. This was a lengthy conversation followed up by two additional calls. I've said many times over the years, there is nothing in that medical examiner's report that proves Kurt Cobain committed suicide. In fact, there is nothing in that report that could not easily be duplicated by a murderer. And murder is the most likely scenario, considering all the information and facts as detailed in the Cobain case study manual, especially the lethal incapacitating dose of heroin found in Kurt's blood system during the autopsy. What I'm afraid of is that Trent, you know, Trent can sleep four hours. Yeah. He does that a lot. Yeah. And get up and go work. You know? Yeah. So you want, you'd rather have Chris go and check into the hotel right away then? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it is a lot of money and it's Francis' money. Courtney normally speaks in broken phrases, so sometimes there are words we can't quite make out. In fact, I missed the quick comment towards the end of this rather long taped conversation until recently. So let's listen one more time. What I'm afraid of is that Trent, you know, Trent can sleep four hours. Yeah. He does that a lot. Yeah. And get up and go work. You know? Yeah. So you want, you'd rather have Chris go and check into the hotel right away then? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, it is a lot of money and it's Francis' money. Within months after Kurt's death, Courtney Love was spending money from the trust account belonging to Kurt's baby girl, Frances Bean Cobain. What was Courtney spending Frances' money on? Her newest boyfriend, Trent Reznor. Courtney was tapping into Francis' trust fund to have Trent Reznor followed and watched by my PI company. She wanted to see if Trent was cheating on her. Courtney later went into a rage and trashed Trent's hotel room with unmentionable personal filth. I can't live with a drug addict. And if he can't, you know, stop being a drug addict, I don't know what to do. Did you hear that? A heroin addict herself in 1994 when we had this conversation, and still abusing drugs 17 years later, Courtney Love tells me that she can't live with a drug addict. Does anyone still doubt that these two were headed for separation and divorce when Kurt was found dead? These conversations were recorded before Kurt's body was even found. Okay. I mean, money's not a problem. 
I mean, money is a problem. I mean, if we, yeah, I know if we get a divorce, I don't know my publishing deal, money will be a problem, but that's not going to happen for quite some time. If he wants to separate, and that's going to make him happy, I mean, hell, this year alone, we don't even need to separate. He's supposed to do, you know, Lollapalooza for four months of the year, and I'm supposed to be touring nine months of the year. So this is our first year that we're actually going to be separated for any length of time. And um, what you were just saying about, for instance, calling Detective Terry and stuff, yeah, I mean, if, if, if me and Kurt got to a divorce and it came down to a custody battle, I'd win in a second. He wouldn't even put up a fight. I know segment three has been a long time in production. Actually, it has been completed, then revised several times over the past year. If you go to our website, www.cobaincase.com, and read the most recent updates, you'll be reminded of the reason we started producing Project Unplugged in the first place. You'll also understand why this will be the last segment of Project Unplugged that we produce unless circumstances change dramatically, such as the actual release of a film by Miss Love about Kurt Cobain. Meanwhile, I'm going to be working on a book about some of the many behind-the-scenes events while pursuing justice in the Cobain case. Even those who have followed our work since I first went public will be shocked and surprised by what you never knew. I do appreciate your letters and emails, even though I can't possibly respond to each one individually. Most of those who write ask if there's anything they can do to help. The answer is yes. You can help keep our website going and help support the continuation of periodic updates on this case through a donation or by purchasing our Cobain Case Study Manual. Many of the younger readers assume I'm a public employee of some type and get paid for this. Except on rare occasions, I do not. I often spend 20 to 30 unpaid hours a week on this case. I did an interview for an Italian television station recently for which I was paid for my time and expenses. This was the first time I asked to be paid for an interview, but after 17 years, if I'm not credible yet, I never will be. The Cobain Case Study Manual is also the best place to go for most of your unanswered questions. Since I cannot answer your questions by replied email, that is exactly why we put the case study manual together. Here are some of the most typical, yet simply answered questions found in the Cobain case study manual. Why haven't you taken Courtney to court? If Kurt was murdered, why wouldn't the police want to cooperate with you? What about Dylan Carlson? Is he a suspect? I heard about this guy named Alan. Is he the killer? Why aren't you sharing all of your evidence? Why is this taking so long? We'll end with a song Courtney Love recorded in 1990. Sounds like she was formulating her career about the time she met her so-called suicidal husband. Bless my 